Happy Wednesday. We're already halfway through the week, everybody. Awesome. I'm so glad that you are here with me today. Welcome to Read Alouds with Miss Castle. We are continuing our story with Cinderella. But we're going to read a different version today, and it's going to be a silly, silly version. So let's get started quickly so we can get to it and enjoy the story, because this is a long one today, and I know we're ready to hear our story. So let's go. We are studying our fairy tales and fables section. Remind me, what are some of the characteristics of a fairy tale? Ready? They begin with once upon a time. They have good and evil characters. They have a happy ending like they all lived happily ever after. They have the rule of three. And last one, there's a problem that needs to be solved. So in the story, there's going to be a problem. And the characters need to be able to figure out the solution so they have that happy ending at the end. Do you remember that fairy tale chant? Well, we're going to do it again. And I cannot wait to see you improve and see those fun dance moves that you can do. Let's go do our fairy tale chant real quickly. Again, fairy tale chant, get ready, go. Fairy tales are stories that start with once upon a time and have good and evil characters and have a happy the ending. Let's continue and look at some of the feeling words that we're going to feel in today's story. Let's take a peek at the feeling word that our character is going to feel in the story. In our story, our character is going to feel confident. What does it mean to feel confident? Yeah, it's when you believe in yourself. Say, I believe Exactly. Being confident in yourself is when you believe in yourself. And I have it in a sentence as well. Audrey was confident in her work when she clicked her answer on Zern. So she was doing her Zern math and she was so confident in her math equation that she knew the answer so quick. She was confident. She clicked her answer and she knew she was right because she believed in herself. So in our story today, our character is going to feel confident in themselves. Are you ready to see what the version of Cinderella is going to be today? It is called Cindy Ellen, a wild western Cinderella. In our story, there's a couple things I want us to look for. First, I want us to compare and contrast, just like last week. So how are they the same? And how is it different to the book we read yesterday? The next thing we're looking for is, when was Cindy Ellen confident in the story? What made her confident? Last one, as always, I want you to be a good reader and look for different characteristics of a fairy tale while the story is being read to you. I think you're going to absolutely love this wild western story of a version of Cinderella. Enjoy everybody, I'll see you in a little bit. Cindy Ellen, A Wild Western Cinderella, written by Susan Lowell and illustrated by Jane Manning. Once there was a rancher who married for his second wife, the orneriest woman west of the Mississippi. She was meaner than a rattlesnake and had two daughters who were the spitting image of her. The rancher also had a daughter who was just as sweet and gentle as she could be. Her name was Cindy Ellen. Scholars, this is an example of a characteristic of a fairy tale. I see that there are good and evil characters. Cindy was a pretty good cowgirl, too. Riding her little gray horse, she wrangled and roped and galloped and looped with the best buckaroos on the range. But as soon as the wedding was over, that snaky old stepmother began to pick on poor Cindy Ellen. She was so good she made her stepsisters look bad. So her stepmother made her do all the dirty work around the ranch. Mend those fences, tend those cows, she would yell, and shovel out the corral. The stepsisters never did a lick of work all day, but Cindy didn't dare to complain to her daddy because his new wife wore the pants in the family. When her chores were done, the poor girl used to sit down and rest among the ashes and cinders on the edge of the fireplace. So her older stepsister nicknamed her Cinderbottom and her younger sister called her Sanderella. But underneath all her dirty clothes, Cindy Ellen was still as pretty as a peach. Then, one day, the biggest cattle king for miles around invited all of his neighbors to a two-day celebration. First, a wild and woolly rodeo, and then a square dance, a real western fandango. 
Cindy's stepsisters puffed up like two turkey gobblers, even though they couldn't ride. They decided to gussy themselves up fit to kill to enter the rodeo. Nice, patient Cindy Ellen ironed their frilly skirts and frizzed their hair for them. Don't you wish you can go to Cinderbottom, sneered the older sister. Ah, you're just poking fun at me, said Cindy sadly. You are right, laughed the younger sister. Nobody could tell you from a cloud of dust, Cinderella. As soon as they were gone, poor Cindy Ellen broke down and cried. Then suddenly she heard a noise outside, almost like a gunfire. But not quite. It wasn't bang, bang. It was more like bing, bing. And there stood a little old lady with a golden pistol still smoking in her hand. Who are you? gasped Cindy Ellen. Say hello to your fairy godmother, Sugarfoot, said the old lady. She twirled the pistol, slapped it back in the holster, and took a good hard look at Cindy. What's the matter with you, honey? You're as down and dirty as a flop-eared hound dog. Stand up straight. Dust yourself off. I, I just want to go to the rodeo, sobbed Cindy Ellen. C can you help? Maybe see, maybe no, said the fairy godmother. Magic is plump worthless without gumption. What you need first, gal, is some gravel in your gizzard. Grit, guts, stop that tomb fool blubbery, and let's get busy. Times are wasted. She reached her golden six gun, and Cindy yelled, Don't shoot! But her fairy godmother had already fired straight up into the air. Bing, bing! Glittery sparkles floated down from the sky and sprinkled Cindy all over with fairy dust. Instantly, her heart was filled with strength and happiness, and her rags turned into the finest riding clothes west of the east. A creamy white Stestin hat crowned her shining hair. Golden buckskin chaps encircled her legs, and a pretty little pair of cowboy boots hugged her feet like gloves. Buckled to the heel of each boot was a spur that shot out rays of fiery light. Those spurs were set with diamonds as big as sugar lumps. Now, said her fairy godmother briskly, where's that horse of yours? She fired her magic pistol into the air, zing, and Cindy's little gray horse became the little silver horse with a softly sparkling coat. His hooves glittered as he pawed the ground. Hit the trail, honey, said the old lady. Remember, there ain't no horse that can't be rode, and there ain't no man that can't be throwed. And one more thing, get home by midnight, gal, or you'll be sorry. When Cindy Ellen pulled up at the rodeo, everybody turned and stared at the dazzling stranger on the silver horse. The rich rancher's son, a rodeo champion by the name of Joe Prince, came forward wearing the biggest belt buckle you ever saw, and he swept his hat off his head. Pleased to meet you, ma'am, he said. Likewise, said Cindy. Just then, Cindy's older sister rode a bucking bronco into the arena, and before you can say oopsie-daisy, that queso wrinkled his spine and boiled over and sent her chasing clouds way up into the sky. Then she bit the dust. Next came the second stepsister, but she couldn't ride the rail fence in a stiff breeze, and pretty soon she was eating gravel just like her sister. Cindy Ellen helped her stepsisters up and brushed them off but they never even recognized her. Then she remembered her godmother's gift of gumption, and she gave Joe Prince a big daredevil grin. My turn, said Cindy Ellen. Cindy Ellen climbed aboard the salty bronc with the belly full of bed springs, a real rip snooter. She touched him with her diamond spurs, and first he tried to cow hop, and then he cat backed, and he sunfished, and he windmilled, and he jackknifed. But Cindy stuck to the saddle like a postage stamp. Ride em, cowgirl, everybody cried in the crowd. And Cindy Ellen was the winner with every curl in place. Next was the figure eight, a butterfly and a wedding ring. She won the trick roping event. And then she and her little horse really burned the breeze. They kicked the jackrabbits right off the trail. They left their shadows 20 miles behind them. And they won the horse race. They even beat Joe Prince. Scholars, this is an example of when Cindy Ellen has confidence in the story. Remember, keep looking for other examples of when she is confident. But Joe didn't seem to care. He rode herd on Cindy Ellen right up to the quarter of twelve at night. Then she suddenly recalled her godmother's warning and went galloping home. By the time she got there, her fine duds had shriveled into sorry rags again. But she had plenty of gumption. After a while, her stepsisters hobbled in, 
and stove up from the rodeo. Ha ha, you missed the champion cowgirl, the other girls jeered. Nobody knows her name or where she disappeared to. And that old Joe Prince is eating his heart out, said the younger one. I bet she comes to the square dance tomorrow night, said Cindy with her daredevil grin. The next evening, her stepsisters got all dressed up like a sore thumb and strutted away to the dance, leaving Cindy Ellen all alone, but not for long. What's that? she said, peeking out of her window. It looked like a cross between a comet and a dust storm. It sounded like silver bells mixed with dynamite. Let's get a crackin', sweet pea, shouted her fairy godmother. You're late. Rustle me up the biggest, dustiest, lumpiest squash you can find. And zingo! The squash became a stagecoach. Next, we check the trap line, said her godmother. Quick as a wink, she turned six cactus mice into six dappled horses, a fat pack rat into a stagecoach driver, and a rough, tough horn toad into a stagecoach guard, riding shotgun beside the driver. Now what about my ugly old clothes? asked Cindy. The old lady answered with a blast of fairy dust that melted into a dress that shone like the sun, the moon, and all the stars together. The skirt floated over the petticoats as soft and puffy as summer clouds. A rainbow of jewels glowed around Cindy Ellen's neck, and the little diamond spurs sparkled once more upon her booted heels. Thank you, ma'am, she cried. The fairy godmother blew the smoke from her pistol, hoisted it, and dusted off her hands. Remember, Miss Cindy, pretty is as pretty does, she said. Magic can backfire, midnight or bust. Cindy promised, and the stagecoach rumbled away. When Cindy Ellen arrived at the Cattle King Square dance, the fiddlers were tuning up for a toe-tapping jamboree. Joe Prince reached for Cindy's hand the instant he laid eyes on her. Buckle on your partners, folks, he cried, and tell them to hang on. Let's shake your boots like lightning until the early dawn. And Cindy answered, Hurry up, cowboy, don't be slow. Hand over hand, I'm laying left and heel. Heel. Do. Joe and Cindy danced the daisy chain, the whirl away, the curl a cue, and the grand chache. They made their feet go wickety whack. Swing them, boys, cried Cindy, and do it right. And Joe called back, Swing those girls till the middle of night. Twirling and swirling, Cindy Ellen lost track of time until all at once she heard the clock begin to strike twelve. She hightailed it out of their lickety split. Whoa! yelled Joe, hot on her heels. But he couldn't catch her. One of the diamond spurs fell off Cindy's boots as she ran, though, and Joe picked it up carefully out of the dust. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, not a particle remained of Cindy's gorgeous outfit except the second diamond spur which she tucked away in her hip pocket. Pretty soon, word got out of the champion cowgirl was the wanted woman. She loved Joe Prince so lovelorn that he was tracking her throughout the territory, and he vowed to marry the horsewoman whose boot fitted the little diamond spur. He tried it on many a foot, but not one could wear it. Last, he came riding up to Cindy's father's place. Go shovel out the stable! hissed her stepmother, and Cindy reluctantly obeyed. First, Joe tried the diamond spur on the younger stepsister, but no matter how he stretched the straps, her hoof was too big. The older sister had crushed her feet into the little bitty boot. So just for an instant, the spur almost fitted, but then her boot split open, and her toes popped out like puppies in a basket, and Joe Prince muttered, Sorry, and he headed out the door. My turn! said the voice that stopped him in his tracks. It was Cindy Ellen, and although her mean stepsisters almost died laughing, Joe let Cindy have her chance, fair and square, and he put the diamond spur around her dirty little boot. It fitted perfectly. Then she pulled out the second diamond spur and buckled it onto the other boot. And at that very moment, Cindy's little horse gave a whinny, and everybody heard a noise like... Wingo, wango, zing, kazing. Let her rip, shouted Cindy Ellen's fairy godmother, brandishing her golden pistol. Hold your fire, yelled Joe Prince. But glistening sparks from the fairy dust were already sprinkling down everywhere. They turned Cindy's clothes from cotton to satin, and they put quite a twinkle on Joe's eye. And Cindy's horse began to sparkle. Yee-haw, yelled the fairy godmother. 
So Cindy Ellen and Joe Prince got hitched and lived happily ever after in a ranch house full of love and rodeo trophies. Cindy's family moved to town where both stepsisters married old city slickers and Cindy's little horse kept his sparkling coat in his glittery hooves to the end of his days. Just hitched. Welcome back, everybody. Did you enjoy the story Cindy Ellen? That was so different. Yeah, it was way different compared to Cinderella. I'm going to have our discussion be a little quick today because our story was so long. So we're going to be really quick with this stuff. Remember, I wanted you to think about what was similar and different. We were comparing and contrasting. So what was something similar in this story than the Cinderella story? Yeah, it started with once upon a time. That's a similarity. They all lived happily ever after. That's another similarity. Their names are similar. Cindy, Ellen, Cinderella. They're, they're pretty similar. What are some differences? Yeah, one was a Western. So it took place outside, like with cowboys and cowgirls. And they rode horses. Cinderella, that took place in a palace. And they had a ball. And she had a fancy gown on. So that's a big difference. Another difference is that she lost the spur on her boot and Cinderella lost her glass slipper. So yes, they both lost something, but what they lost was different. So that's how we can easily compare and contrast. There's some similarities, but there's a lot of differences too. Did you like this story? Did you see the similarities from the first one to this one? I'm glad you did. Remember, I wanted you to think about when was Cindy Ellen confident? She was such a confident girl almost the whole entire book. She got on her horse and rode her horse with ease, and she did all of that on her own. The fairy godmother reminded her to use something called gumption. That's a similar word to having confidence. Having gumption is believing in yourself, which is the same thing as being confident in yourself. So the fairy godmother reminded her to have gumption, and then she was able to go ride the horse, and do all the tricks on the horse effortlessly and made the cowboy be like, whoa, she is awesome. Exactly. So her having confidence really made the cowboy be like, I like her. She has a lot of confidence in herself. Before you go, I want you to do one thing for me. I want you to click the link below and fill out the question. There's me two questions. I want you to tell me what's one similarity. How are they the same? And one difference. How is this book different? So how is this story similar to Cinderella? And how is it different from Cinderella? I cannot wait to read your responses. Have a great rest of your day and I'll see you here tomorrow for a really funny version of Cinderella. Goodbye everybody.